It is important to remember when discussing early humans that for millions of years we were not apex predators. It took a significant amount of time for early humans to reach the position we currently sit at, scarily and woefully dominant over all of the animal kingdom. In these early years, humans faced a wide range of threats. Everything from crocodilians, aggressive herbivores, giant bears, and even huge birds were both dangerous and commonplace in the Pleistocene. One group of predators, however, stands infamously above all others in both ranks of popularity and infamy the saber-toothed cats, or saber-toothed tigers, as they have become known colloquially. The very name is enough to spark a powerful mental image, a giant feline, much more ferocious than the lions and tigers of the modern age, stood looking out over its territory as it bears its fangs and roars. Across the world, saber-toothed cats were a prominent and dangerous group of animals. But it is important to remember that is only what they were, animals. Just like us, these deadly mammals had complex social lives, emotions and habits that are typically overlooked in favor of the spectacular hunting weaponry boasted by these apex predators. In today's video, we will be examining several of the most prominent saber-toothed cats who lived on the grasslands of the Pleistocene world our earliest ancestors were beginning to conquer. We will be looking at animals from across the world, exploring how they lived and hunted alongside our distant relatives. Sit back and relax as we take you back to the Pleistocene to explore the saber-toothed tigers the prehistoric predators of early humans. One thing that might surprise you about these prehistoric predators is their position in the feline family tree. Today, all cat species sit in the order Carnivora, a wider family that contains similar related animals, dogs, bears, weasels, and seals, amongst many others. Within Carnivora, all cats sit in a family known as Felidae, a very diverse group containing everything from lions and tigers through to cougars and caracals, along with much smaller sand and jungle cats, amongst others. Many of these larger cats, such as lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars, are placed in the subfamily Pantherinae, while some of the typically smaller cats, including not only sand cats and jungle cats, but also cheetahs and cougars, are placed in the subfamily Felinae. Where does this leave saber-toothed cats then? They actually sit outside both subfamilies within a separate subfamily in the Felinae family. This subfamily is known as Macarodontinae, and all of the animals we will be discussing in today's video are closely related in this group. While these cats are related to each other, they are not closely related to tigers, which can lead to some misconceptions about their famous nickname. They are also not particularly closely related to other cats in the Felidae family and split off from a common ancestor much earlier. Macarodontinae contains a variety of subgroups, and cats from this group could be found across many continents, the Americas, Asia, Africa, and Europe. The subfamily name is derived from the Greek words for dagger tooth, as all of the cats in this group boasted the signature saber-shaped canines that aided them in their unique hunting techniques. Many of these cats in this subfamily favored open grasslands such as prairies, pompous, and savanna, and were adapted to tackling large prey items. These cats first appeared in the early Miocene Epoch, 
around 23 million years ago. When our human ancestors arrived on the scene, they were entering a world that was already ruled by these sharp-toothed predators. In many environments, they were the apex predators that would make life for early humans very difficult. Just like us, these cats first evolved in Africa and were able to spread out across the world throughout their evolutionary story. Humans would encounter a wide range of species in almost every continent they ventured into, and in each place, they would almost always be the top predators. It wasn't until the Holocene Epoch, the very epoch we sit in today, that Macarodontin cats became extinct, having been forced into competition for food resources with both contemporary cat species and groups of technologically advanced early humans. It is also interesting to note that saber-shaped teeth were not a signature possession of Macarodontine cats. While these cats are without a doubt the most famous animals to have boasted these awe-inspiring weapons, many other predators throughout history have employed this technique to subdue their prey. The first instance of this can actually be traced back over 250 million years when gorgonopsids such as lycanops were roaming the African scrublands of the Permian period, long before even the dinosaurs appeared on the scene. As far as we know, after the extinction of the gorgonopsids, saber teeth would lie dormant in the fossil record until the Cenozoic came around, with marsupials such as Thylacosmilus evolving some of the most impressive curved fangs ever seen. Other groups of carnivorous mammals would then follow suit. The Creodonts, the Nimravids, the Hyenodonts, and the Barbarophilidae, all of them predatory mammals that were superficially similar to cats. This video picks up at the very late stage in the evolution of the saber tooth where the last group of animals to possess them is Macarodontinae cats. Dinophelis is the cat that was there from the very start. Throughout the annals of human evolution, it was, out of all the saber-tooths, the one that the majority of early humans were most familiar with. Cat species within the genus Dinophelis were widespread across both the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs, appearing roughly 5 million years ago on the plains of Africa. By around 1 million years ago, the genus had diversified and reached Europe, Asia, and even North America. But it was our ancestors in Africa that spent the most time around this species. Many Dinophelis species were large, roughly the same size as modern-day jaguars and leopards, and unlike many of the saber-toothed cats, they preferred more densely sheltered forest environments. This has led scientists to speculate that, like those cats, it may have possessed a spotted coat of fur to help it blend into the environment and stalk its prey with the greatest degree of ease. The canine teeth of Dinophelis were shorter than those seen in later saber-toothed cats, but were still significantly longer than those found in modern-day lions and tigers, indicating without a doubt which subfamily these animals belong to. When Dinophelis first evolved, it was not the most feared animal in Africa. That title went to the early leopards who were specialized in climbing trees to catch their prey, meaning that almost nowhere was guaranteed to be safe for the Australopithecines and early members of the Homo genus that lived in sub-Saharan Africa. Dinophelis then preferred to hunt large, grazing animals such as antelope and equines. Like many big cats, Dinophelis would have used the undergrowth as cover, the possible mottled or striped pattern on its coat breaking up its form in the low light. 
A short chase would have given way just as the cat found a suitable place to ambush its target. Not all hunts would have been successful, but using stealth would have been preferable for an animal that was not built for long-distance chases. Evidence exists for Dinophelis having preyed upon Australopithecus africanus, a species that tended to favor the woodlands of ancient Africa more than the open plains. This was a primate that was yet to fully master the art of walking upright for long periods of time, and thus spent a lot of time around trees. This species probably crossed paths with Dinophelis often, and some of these encounters were likely unfriendly to say the least. On top of this, skulls of the early human relative Paranthropus have been found in fossil sites in South Africa that seem to have been punctured by teeth that match the size and distance of those possessed by Dinophelis. This is thought to have been a rare occurrence, perhaps when the cats were driven out of the woodlands and onto the plains by hunger. Dinophelis was famous not only for its saber teeth, but for its powerful forelimbs that are thought to have been used to pin down a prey item in the act of killing it. The social structure and behavior of Dinophelis is known only in passing, inferred by special discoveries that have been made in South Africa, not too far from the Sturkfontein Caves. At this site, known as Bolt's Farm, the remains of a family of Dinophelis were found preserved together in very close proximity. A male, female, and cub were present in what is thought to have been an ancient pit, a natural trap that several unfortunate animals found themselves in. This is evidence of social behavior, implying that the cats possibly lived together in groups. Beneath the Dinophelis family in the pit at Bolt's farm lie a small troop of baboon remains. It is thought that the cats may have attempted to prey upon the baboons that were stuck in the pit, only to find themselves stuck in there in turn. There is also substantial evidence that Dinophelis may have sheltered in caves, as a great deal of cats' remains have been discovered within them. All eight named species of Dinophelis are thought to have gone extinct when the late Pleistocene gave way to the last ice age, as the forests they relied upon turned into dry grasslands, the cats' main sources of food disappeared, and they found themselves unable to adapt to a quickly changing world. Like the other saber-toothed cats, they eventually disappeared entirely. Another widespread genus of Macarodontine cat that cropped up in the fossil record around the middle Miocene epoch, Macarodus has unfortunately become something of a wastebasket taxon in recent years. This is a term used by biologists to describe a genus of animal that is used to classify species whose exact placement is uncertain. The cat was first described and named in 1832 by Johann Jacob Kaup, a German naturalist. Prior to Kaup's studies, the remains were thought to have belonged to an ancient bear species, but Kaup was able to identify them as a saber-toothed cat. As the years progressed, many remains of other saber-toothed cats were placed within the genus Macarodus with fossils that actually belong to animals such as Megantyrion, Nimravides, and Sansanosmilus having been assigned to it over the years. This has since been rectified, and whilst Macarodus is still something of a wastebasket taxon, it is still a valid genus, and the cat known as Macarodus did indeed exist about the size of a modern-day lion on average. Most Macarodo species were one meter tall and two meters long. It was known from sites across Africa, Europe, 
Asia, and North America in five confidently described species. The largest of these was a species from China known as Macarodus horribilis, which was among the largest of the Macarodontine cats overall, weighing in at over 400 kilograms. This is over double the average weight for a lion, which would have made it a formidable and bulky predator. Macarodus skulls are narrow but large, with long, knife-like canines that became less and less serrated as the animal used them. Due to the bulky size and short legs of this cat, scientists have been able to infer that all known species were ambush predators, laying in wait amidst the sparse foliage or long grasses of open plains, making a move to strike only when the prey animal was close enough. Despite the length of its huge canines, Macarodus was capable of fitting its teeth comfortably in its mouth, unlike later species such as Smilodon, whose teeth were so large that they permanently hung outside the jaws. It is thought that Macarodus species were skilled jumpers, able to leap onto a prey item in order to use its canine teeth to deliver a slicing wound to the throat. Like many saber-toothed cats, the long canine fangs of Macarodus were delicate and were only used in restraining prey as a last resort. While the cat's heavy arms weighed down a prey item, the teeth would only be used if a cat was confident a killing blow would be made. To risk breaking the teeth was a potential death sentence and would have rendered the cat unable to make a clean and quick kill which could have resulted in starvation. Macarodus fossils are very well known from the Cerro de los Batallones site in Spain, where it was a predator of large herbivores. Many different animals were on the menu for the cat, everything from early giraffe relatives and rhinoceroses, to horses, deer, antelopes, and even elephants. In America, Macarodus species are thought to have been capable of even taking down some species of ground sloth, amongst the largest and most dangerous animals of the open plains. Interestingly, the Macarodus teeth from Spain show a high degree of breakage, implying that these cats had indeed been using their teeth to hold down a prey item, a highly risky move indeed. Macarodus Kabir, from the Jurab Desert in what is today the northern reaches of Chad in Central Africa, is the species that is thought to have been a man-eater. Sahelanthropus, a genus of early primate that would have resembled both chimpanzees and humans, is thought to have been a key prey item for this species. This was a particularly large Macarodus species, and one that would have been a persistent threat to our early ancestors in this region. Social behavior in Macarodus is thought to have been highly similar to that observed in modern-day big cats. As a predator of the open plains, it is feasible that these cats possibly lived in prides like modern lions, perhaps run by a single male with the females performing most of the hunting. Pack hunting behavior would have increased the success rates of finding food, and since so many large herbivores crossed paths with these cats, it was almost a necessity. Homotherium was what has become known as a scimitar-toothed cat and was an extremely widespread genus Known from both Americas and the breadth of Eurasia as well as Africa, this cat first appeared in the early Pliocene and lived long into the late Pleistocene, meaning it crossed paths with several species of early humans. So what sets Homotherium apart from the other Macarodontines that it should be referred to as a scimitar-toothed cat and not a saber-toothed one? The obvious difference is the teeth. 
Homotherium's saber canines were much shorter and more curved than those found in other Macarodontines, an indicator that it was much more at home hunting faster-moving prey items that did not need to be dispatched with a strike to the throat. The second difference can be seen in the limb structure of these spectacular cats. While overall Homotherium was smaller in stature than the cats we have met so far, its legs were proportionally much larger. Homotherium ran on four elongated slender legs that would have allowed for a great deal of speed. This permitted it to hunt more like a cheetah than a tiger, and it was a pursuit predator of smaller, less bulky herbivores. It lived in the open and alpine habitats and is thought to have been much better suited to a life on the mammoth steppe than its relatives, meaning that it was able to survive for longer in a greater range of areas. It is thought to have been diurnal, hunting during the day and sleeping at night. Due to their fantastic adaptations to a life living in colder, more open environments, Homotherium was a keen predator of a wide variety of prey items. African cats are thought to have preyed not only upon fast-moving antelopes and horses, but on elephant calves too. The Homotherium of the Northern Hemisphere almost certainly hunted early humans and were alive on Earth for almost all of our evolutionary history. Sharp, retractable claws and powerful jaws would have meant that our early ancestors lived in fear of these speedy and intimidating pursuit predators. For reference, imagine an animal the size and shape of a leopard running towards you, but on much longer legs. Where a leopard relies on stealth, Homotherium would have had huge reserves of stamina. When you get tired, Homotherium can keep going. In America, specifically Pleistocene, Texas, a series of Homotherium skeletons are associated with the close-by remains of over 400 individual mammoth calves. The Homotherium discovered here range greatly in terms of age. Elderly individuals lie alongside adults in the prime of their life who in turn nurtured cubs who can also be found in these deposits. It is thought that this site, known as the Friesenhan Cave, was a den of sorts for a pride of Homotherium, belonging to a population of cats that fed on young mammoths as their primary food source. This is direct evidence for complex social behavior. It is thought that a pack of cats would have hunted together to bring down a mammoth, before they work together to drag the kill back to the cave to eat as a community. While the forelimbs were slender and built for speed, they also provided the cat with a great deal of musculature and power, meaning it was perfectly equipped for bringing down strong prey items as well as fast ones. It is even thought that the cat would have dismembered the mammoths into more carryable pieces so each cat could transport a fair share of the carcass back to the cave for others to enjoy. Caving behavior was likely explored as a means of tackling other, competing carnivores of the region. Dire wolves, short-faced bears, and other cats such as American lions lived in these lands and could have overpowered Homotherium for their food in the right conditions. Sheltering in a cave with the entire family group meant that problems such as these were minimized. Megantyrion was a diverse genus of saber-toothed cat that thrived throughout the Miocene, Pliocene, and Pleistocene across North America, Africa, and Eurasia. It grew more rare across the Southern Hemisphere as it was not a cat that was built for forested environments, preferring to hunt its prey out on the open plains. Some of the oldest Megantyrion fossils date to around four and a half million years old and remarkably have been found in North America. 
It is therefore being proposed that this was a cat that followed the opposite migration routes to its relatives, having evolved in North America, later spreading out to Asia via the Bering Strait. From here, it reached Africa roughly three and a half million years ago and made it to Europe around two and a half million years ago. Skepticism persists, however. Some Kenyan remains, possibly belonging to Megantyrion, could be seven million years old, making Africa their evolutionary birthplace. Megantyrion species were essentially the opposite to Homotherium. It was a short, stocky, heavy species, about the size of a modern jaguar. Its neck muscles were amongst the largest of all known cats, which helped it deliver a very dangerous bite to the necks of the herbivores it hunted. European Megantyrion species are thought to have preyed upon large hooved mammals, as well as the calves of elephants and rhinoceroses. Not only was it an effective hunter on the ground, but it would have been freely capable of climbing trees with utmost skill, perhaps dragging its kills onto large branches to be free of the burdens of scavengers on the ground. In contrast to some of the other Macarodontine cats, Megantyrion is thought to have been solitary, much like a modern leopard. Its carnasial teeth were small, indicating that it would have eaten its food at a very slow pace away from other animals. Megantyrion specimens from Western Asia are known to have come into violent contact with Homo erectus groups, as Homo erectus skulls are known to harbor wounds matching the dimensions of this cat's saber teeth. However, judging by the positioning of the marks on the skull, it is thought that this cat was not hunting the Homo erectus, but merely attacking it in an act of self-defense. Startled, the cat was not actively stalking the hominids, but may have been the target of an attack by them in order to get it to run away. The cornered Megantyrian did the opposite, lunging for one of the Homo erectus head-on, biting down hard on the head of the human. This resulted in the death of the Homo erectus, whose companions likely turned tail and fled in the opposite direction. It is not thought that the cat then proceeded to feed on the hominid, and it simply discarded the kill to the mercy of scavengers. Elsewhere, however, in South Africa, this is not the case, and there is direct evidence, discovered through examining carbon isotopes in Megantyrion teeth, that this cat hunted early humans. Not only did it hunt them, but it was more likely to hunt them than the other cat species in the region, such as Dinophelis. Interestingly, Megantyrion is thought to have been a possible direct ancestor to the most famous saber-toothed cat of all, Smilodon. This is due to its imposing presence in North America and similarities within the fossil specimens discovered so far. No other saber-toothed cat has been as well represented or studied in the media as Smilodon. In fact, if you see a saber-toothed cat in art, television, film, or a game, it is almost definitely supposed to be or modeled on Smilodon. This is due to the fact that Smilodon remains are very well known indeed which has resulted in the cat becoming one of the most famous prehistoric animals full stop. Three species are known to science, Smilodon gracilis, Smilodon populator, and Smilodon fatalis, all three of which were known only from the Americas. It was a particularly large genus, built robustly with a great deal of musculature to help it bring down powerful herbivores. Its saber-shaped canines were amongst the longest of any Macarodontine cat and would have been used sparingly to deliver a killing blow to the throat. Smilodon evolved in North America and was able to access South America when the Panamanian land bridge connected the two continents together three million years ago, 
allowing an event known as the Great American Interchange to take place. South America received animals such as saber-toothed cats, horses, camelids, pigs, and proboscideans from North America, whilst North America received ground sloths, glyptodonts, terror birds, rodents, and more. Smilodon, a cat that was suited to hunting large animals such as bison and camels in North America, thrived in the South, possibly even outcompeting the spectacular terror birds, forcing them to extinction in what is now Brazil and Argentina. Smilodon did not become extinct until very recently, about 10,000 years ago to be more precise. This means that humans coexisted with the cat for around 3,000 years when they first arrived in North America, and some of these encounters were almost certainly deadly. Smilodon was suited to hunting some of the biggest and most powerful herbivores of the American plains. So humans, especially lone or unarmed ones, would have been an easy snack for such a successful and coordinated hunter. Like many other Macarodontines, Smilodon would have taken a stealthy approach as an ambush predator, using foliage or tall grass as cover as it slowly closed the ground between itself and its prey. At the very last minute, it would strike paws first, pinning down the struggling creature and planting its teeth firmly in the neck. Such precision ensured the teeth rarely broke, and the cat would live to hunt again. It is unknown, however, whether or not Smilodon was social. A key piece of evidence to claim that they were social is that Smilodon fossils are associated with the La Brea Tar Pits, close to what is now Los Angeles in the U.S. state of California. La Brea consists of many pools of sticky, sludge-like tar, which would have trapped struggling herbivores within as they carelessly walked over them. Studies on lions and hyenas show that large mammalian carnivores are quick to respond to the sound of struggling animals in such situations, and it is likely that Smilodon may have hunted in this way too. This could point to enhanced intelligence a trait that is closely associated with social, pack-hunting animals, such as lions and hyenas. There is also substantial evidence for healed injuries on Smilodon bones. A solitary Smilodon would likely succumb to a quick death if inflicted with such wounds, but a social Smilodon would have been looked after by a group whilst it recovered, with food being brought to it. The structure of the hyoid bones in Smilodon vocal structures imply that it was capable of a wide range of sounds, including roaring, which provide further evidence for sociality. Conversely, however, there is plenty of evidence for violence within members of the same species amid Smilodon remains, which could point to a solitary lifestyle. Competition was high which resulted in broken bones, bite wounds, and territorial clashes, some of which were possibly fatal. The argument continues, but the evidence seems to tip slightly in the favor of these cats being social animals. Human relationships with big cats then date a lot further back than you might have first suspected. It seemed that throughout the Pleistocene, wherever humans roamed, saber-toothed cats had mated there first. It is very plain to see why these animals have held such a special place in our prehistory, with early depictions of them popping up in cave art amongst our ancestors throughout the Pleistocene. If you were to take away human tools, cities, weapons, and technology today, the site on the plains and forests of Africa, Eurasia, and the Americas would be a similar one. The cats would reign supreme, with predators such as the tiger, lion, leopard, jaguar, and cougar humbling us as the self-proclaimed top predators of the world. These beautiful predators have inspired human art and stories for millennia, 
and there is very little chance of that stopping anytime soon.